Hey guys, Bluff Monkey back again for Sonic Academy, and in today's series of tech tips, I want to look at um, how we might combine effects plugins in various ways and why we might do it. So there's going to be a couple of examples of these things being used together, and also I think in a couple of videos we'll probably have a chat about why you might do things in a certain order. So let's get stuck straight in. Okay, in this first video, I want to look at the classic combination of reverb and chorus. Now, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe the first implementation of this that was kind of famous was the Lexicon rack reverbs of the 80s. Um, these were those like, the big, lush 80s reverb sound that you recognize. Lexicon was famous for combining a reverb and a chorus algorithm together. So what I've got here is a couple of audio examples, both being fed into a reverb on a return send channel. Now, by itself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play you the first one, which is a vocal. I've got it set relatively wet. Obviously the reverb is set to 100% wet because we're using the send. Let's just take it off solo. Do you ever think of me? Do you ever think of me? So, you know, it's a, it's a fairly standard way of applying reverb to vocals. I'm not a massive fan of the live reverb, I'll be honest. It's, uh, I always find it kind of metallic sounding. So it's just preference. Now, the live reverb does have a chorus built in, but it's rubbish, so I'm not going to use it. So what I have done is I've put Valhalla Ubermod, which is my pretty much my go-to ensemble chorus modulation kind of plugin when I need this kind of thing. Um, and what we'll do is I'm actually going to put my headphones on for this because it, this is going to be fairly subtle. So I'm going to switch Ubermod on. And as I'm playing this loop through, have a listen to what happens when I raise and lower the percentage of chorus being applied to the reverb. Now, this is going to be fairly subtle. Do you ever think of me? Do you ever think of me? Do you ever think of me? Do you ever think... So in this instance, it's actually lifting and expanding out the reverb a little bit. You think about what a chorus is doing, it's, that's kind of what it does anyway. But what we'll do is we'll solo this reverb channel just so that we can hear this a little bit better. Now, again, you want to do this subtly. We, what, what I don't like is um, a lot of the time when you use chorus on a reverb, you can hear kind of a phasing or a flanging sound, uh, and that's not what we want. But let's have a listen to this. So you can actually hear that. I'm getting almost this ballooning sensation of the reverb. It's not getting louder, but it's, it's, it's expanding out and softening. Um, so the next audio example I want to use is more of an effect or a soundscape. So let's just listen to it dry. Take this off solo, that would help. So this is likely to provide the reverb with a little bit more to grab onto. So let's introduce the reverb into this with the chorus off. And now we'll do the same thing. We, we will bring in and out the chorus on the reverb. So I'm sensing the same thing, a ballooning and a softening of the reverb. Let's do this in solo again so you can hear it better. So again, for me, it takes it from this narrow focus of reverb to this bigger, wider, softer, more pleasing sound. But again, this should be subtle. You don't want to overdo this. 
um, because you will start to hear phasing that you don't necessarily want. And it's one of those things that you might find if you've got two or three reverbs going on, if you apply a little bit of chorus to each one, it can help everything sit and smush together. I um, mean, it's not compression, but it's almost acting like a compressor in the way that it's harmonizing sound. So that's example one. Try experimenting with using different kinds of chorus on different kinds of um, reverbs.